Well, one of the great pleasures of doing interviews is that I get to speak to some of the sports figures I admired growing up, and today it is indeed a pleasure to speak to one of those uh, persons, and it's an honor to speak today to one of the gentlemen who were one of the building blocks that made West Indies cricket great in the 70s and coming into the 80s, Mr. Lawrence Rowe. How are you today, sir? Yeah, man. Good, man. Yeah. Great, great. Good to be here. Great. Um, so, Mr. Lawrence Rowe has agreed to talk a little bit about his life and his cricket career. And um, at this moment, I'd like to go back to the beginning. Uh, were you born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica? Yes, I was born in Kingston. Raised in Kingston. Yes. I'm, um, a, I'm a born Kingstonian, as they say. Well, you know, some people come from the country. Yeah. And, you know, but you're born and raised in Kingston. Yeah, born and raised in Kingston. Um, what did your parents do? My father was a bus, bus driver and my mother was a housewife. Okay. And um, what, was, what was it like growing up in Kingston back, uh, back in those days during your childhood? Early years, I didn't have much. My earliest memory of growing up is probably when I was about, um, I would say about six, seven. And um, I can remember uh, my parents was um, very poor. And I can remember, one of the things I remember most was my father was living with his sister. And um, we had a problem one night there and he had to get packing. And we had to uh, move that night. And we had to walk for about three miles. The entire family, I was the, uh, the fourth of six, mm -hmm. six children. And we had to walk that night to get shelter with some other relative. Wow. And that was the early part of you know, my memory mm -hmm. of us growing up. So would you say it was a rough childhood? It was a rough childhood, but um, I would say a happy one for the times. Yes. You know, we were poor, but we were happy. My mother uh, made it possible that we got most of the things we mm -hmm. desired in those days. It wasn't a lot right. to really make you happy. Yes. So, um, you know, we, we, we were happy with what we had. Yes. So you were content? Yeah. Yes. Um, you say you have some siblings. How many brothers and sisters? One brother who is now deceased mm -hmm. and um, four sisters. Was he older than you? Yes, he was the first. Did he play cricket? He played cricket. He was the one who inspired me to start playing cricket. Oh, okay. Actually. What was his name? Ferdinand Rowe. Ferdinand? Yeah. Okay, great. And um, so at what age did you get the cricket bug? When, what, how old were you at that time? I, I think funny enough, it, um, I got the soccer bug first. Okay. Because, you know, back in those days, the youngsters in the Caribbean played both sports. Right. It was like the only two sports at the time mm -hmm. that went on per se. And um, we used to play both cricket and football, like Americans call it soccer. But we used to play both sports. Right. And I was extremely good at playing soccer. Yes. And then my brother, you now we used to go with his older friends to a nearby field and play a lot of cricket there. I started to go with them as a youngster and start mm -hmm. to pick up balls and throw back and then eventually start taking part in playing cricket. In playing cricket. Uh, can you pinpoint what age that you realized, hey, I'm pretty good at this, the cricket? I think it um, was about, it was when I was older, we, 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 we um, for, for youngsters together, we used to play, but there's nothing that you could pinpoint and say, you know, uh, you know I was good at this. We, I felt at the time that all of us were about on the same level. Mm -hmm. All of the youngsters, we were just playing. Right. But um, when I think I was fairly good at it was when I was much older, probably at about 15, mm -hmm. 14, 15. And mm -hmm. I think I was really good at this thing. Yeah. So you're in high school at this point? Yes. And um, you played for your high school team? Uh, I played for my, um, my, the high school I went, didn't have a cricket team. Mm -hmm. I played primary school cricket. Uh -huh. That is what propelled me when I was about 12, 13. Mm -hmm. I, I was going to Greenwich Primary. Yes. And um, funny enough, it was very funny the day I, um, they had lunch time. I used to play cricket with my um, brother and his friends. Yes. Back at the park. And then the, this day I was walking at lunch time. Mm -hmm. And the bigger guys in school was playing what they call 
bowl for bat. Mm -hmm. We used to call it catch a shimmy. Yes. But, but it was bowl for bat. I'm not sure that goes through the, the entire Caribbean. Yes. And um, I was just walking by and somebody hit the ball in the air and I caught it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going for my bat and the, the guys were saying, little boy, you, little boy, let, let me bat for you, let me bat for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, man, I want to bat for myself. So mm -hmm. I went in, took the bat, and bat the entire afternoon. Wow. <laughs> they, they were amazed. So by the next week, I was called up and was summoned to the school team. Wow. Yeah. So it was just a kind of a fluke thing that happened? Yes, and I was summoned to the school team. I was such, such a good youngster right. that they brought me to the school team. Wow. And the guys told the sportsmaster that this little guy can play. Yes. You know, get him and mm -hmm. invite me out to practice with the team and I made the team. Mm -hmm. And the first match I played for the school, I made 50, 50 I think it was 53. Really? Okay. And I picture for them, yeah. Right. Um, quickly, what part of Kingston did you grow up? A place called Maxil. Maxfield Avenue, mm -hmm. that's where I was born, but I grew up in the Walton Park Road area, okay. which at the time I grew up there was a pretty much decent neighborhood, mm -hmm. years later became yes. but, you know, a ghetto type neighborhood, you know, mm -hmm. years later as things change. Mm -hmm. um, just to want to touch a little bit about your school days, what kind of a student were you? I would say that I was... Um, uh, a, a little higher than average student. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't the best student, okay. but I was far from being the worst. Right. And um, I went to primary school, and in those days you had a thing called common entrance, and then you had um, uh, they, they have a thing called technical entrance mm -hmm. later on. I did the common entrance and got sick mm -hmm. before the examination, so I didn't get into the granted secondary school then. And um, later on, I took the um, technical entrance, and I actually passed the technical entrance. Mm -hmm. And then my bigger brother said that he didn't want me to go to a technical school, mm -hmm. so he would um, supply the finances mm -hmm. to my parents for me to um, attend a granted secondary school. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, later on, he redeemed that, mm -hmm. and I had to go private secondary. Okay. So I, you know, I, I went to private secondary school in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. What was your strongest subject in school? I think maths was a good subject of mine. Maths? Max, yes, because I, I, um, after I left um, that I went on to um, Jamaica Commercial Institute to do accounting. Yes. And uh, that is what I was doing when I, when I played first for the Jamaica School Boys. Okay. Um, so let's fast forward a little bit now. Tell me about how you got to play for the Jamaican team now, cricket team, the national team. Well, and how I, old were you? Yeah. When I was at um, Jamaica Commercial Institute, I was probably about 17, 17 percent of the time. And um, I used to play for the youth clubs, mm -hmm. Jamaica Youth Club. And at this stage, the, um, the all school team, which is mean all the, the um, secondary school, we got together and um, they were going to select an all school team for Jamaica to play in the Caribbean tournament. Mm -hmm. and. Alan Ray, who was the president of the board, I think he was the one who influenced that four youth club boys should be included, the top four youth club boys should be included in that mm -hmm. party. And I unfortunately was one of the guys who was included in that. Basil Williams was the second one, you heard about yes. him, he also played for the West Indies. Mm -hmm. So he was the second person and uh, two others, George Romy and um, Earl Buff were, mm -hmm. the, were the other two. Mm -hmm. and. Um, we got together with the, on that, um, in that group of guys, mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough to have made the, the Jamaica team. This is what, probably about 69 maybe? Right, it was 60, 60, 68 the first time. Yes, at this time, was Morris Foster was already on the team, right? Morris Foster was playing for Jamaica, He's, he was ahead of us. Okay, was he, was was he the captain? Us. No, no, he was ahead of us, he was the captain of this team, no. Okay. Morris played years before me. He played about four or five years before me for Jamaica Youth. Okay. A guy named Paul Buchanan was the um, was the captain of the team. Okay. He had played for Jamaica from being a schoolboy the um, the previous year. Mm -hmm. He had represented Jamaica, so he was the captain of that schoolboy team. Uh, now, a lot of people know your nickname is Yaga. 
How did that nickname come about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, today all, all my friends have a different way in which that name came about. Really? But for me, I remember it very well that the, I was singing a song, going to the, the park that we normally play cricket mm -hmm. with my brother. And I just came out that day and was singing. Yaga yaga ya, ya mm. goa yaga ya, for go mm. see yaga ya. And then my friends that day, <laughs> yaga was the name. Some of my friends had different ways to see how this yaga came about. But that is mm -hmm. the way I remember it coming about. And ever since that, I was um, I was called yaga. Mm -hmm. My my um, pet name that my parents and my sister and brother called me earlier was Carlton. Carlton? Yeah. Okay. I was known as Carlton. Anybody today, mm -hmm. you call me Carlton. No, I know them. They knew me from when I was extremely young. Now where did that name come from? Because that's not your middle name. I mean, no, it's not my middle name. My <laughs> mother let just call the Carlton. They just call you Carlton. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So now you're playing for J the Jamaican national team, and um, you know you're you're excelling and, and rising and everything. And um, so 1972, you get called for the West Indies team in February 1972. I, uh, um, your first match is against New Zealand at Sabina Park, your home ground. And what a match. Yes. Uh, you scored 214 in the first innings. In the second innings, 100 not out. So in your first test match, you scored 314 runs. And that record stands up to this day. Test cricket has been played since 1877. About 3,000 men have played test cricket. And up to this day, no one has broken that record. 314 runs in your very first test match. Do you look back on, on it now and still feel in awe? I mean, how do you look at it now? <laughs> I, am, I am blessed and, and honored that, you know, I had um, made such an impact mm -hmm. at the start of my career. And it's extremely difficult when you um, start to play a sport and you, you start at the mountaintop. Yes. Because there is no other way else to go but... Yes. Um, so that is the, the negative side of that. Yes. But um, it was a wonderful thing and a wonderful feeling and to see that, you know, Chess Creek hasn't played for so long mm -hmm. and it is now I think over forty years yes. since um, that has been done and you know, mm -hmm. I still hold a record, nobody has gotten there. Yes. You know, it's just fantastic. Yes. Now later on you also had a triple century, which we'll get to in a little bit, but when you if the triple century and then you look at that, 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 that sort of mark right there, and then you look at the 314 runs in your first test match. Is there one that you're more proud of? Um, well, from a historical standpoint, mm -hmm. the first test, yes. really, because um, I'm the first and only person to have done it to date. Yes. So from that standpoint, yes. But um, the Trinidad 2 was extremely remarkable. For one, it was my first first class hundred outside of Jamaica, mm -hmm. and um, and two, I was the second West Indian I think to have made three hundred in the yes. Test match at that time. After Sobers, yeah. Yes, and it was um, then voted the, the 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 innings, the best innings by a West Indian mm -hmm. batsman. Yes. Up until that time, so you yeah. know, it, it it just really really was something that was mm -hmm. special and. Um, mm -hmm. The way the, the Bajan crowd reacted, and I suppose from the other islands, because you know, when test matches play in Barbados, mm -hmm. unless the people from the other islands oh, yeah, come across travel. to watch it, travel and come and watch test matches. Yes. And it was extraordinarily exciting Yes. for me, and I suppose for over the years, the comments you hear mm -hmm. that the fans really, really, really are true. People remember it the things were feelings that propelled me to be one of the top class West Indian batsmen. Yes. One little point I wanted to make real quickly about the 314 runs in your first test match. You could have had more because you were 100 not out in the second innings and you guys declared. Yes. So it could have been more runs. It could have been more, but um, one understand and it, I, it, it, it was being threatened, the second innings was being threatened because we were getting close to a declaration because we were trying to win the test match. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't get there with, with, with the amount of time to spare. Yes. I probably they would have probably ruined probably would have declared without yes. me reaching the hundred. Yes, yes. So yes. I was fortunate to have um, mm -hmm. finished the second hundred. When you finished that first test match and you have three hundred and fourteen runs in your first in your first match, 
Did you think it was easy? I mean, what was your mindset at that time? No, I'm not thinking it was easy because um, the way I learned the game growing up, you know that there is pitfall because I had some pit pitfall before mm -hmm. in the early stage of my career where yes. you get some failure. So yes. you know that um, you know reaching the, the highest level. Mm -hmm. You know, although I performed so well in the first test match, you know that this is not going to last forever. Yes. There's going to be a point when failure is going to come, and it's always come back from the failures. And you did it on your home ground. Yes. So you can, I could imagine the pressure because everybody's expecting a century now every time you go out to bat. Yes, the entire world. And, and one other thing about that too, prior to the test match, I've made a double century in a match, I think, against Guyana. And then I made a double century against New Zealand for Jamaica. Yes. Remember back in those days, they used to play the island, yes. they used to play the team, mm -hmm. the visiting team first. Mm -hmm. So I made a double century at 227 against New Zealand before the test match. Yes. So I was really in tremendous form. Right. So going in that test match, although it was my first, mm -hmm. apart from the jitters mm -hmm. of playing your first test match, as, as soon as I started, Oh, they're getting off the mark and start. It was like a continuation of the double lunge that I made earlier. Right, right. It's almost like he just... Yes, yeah. yes.